Welcome back to part two of our lecture on cell cycle and mitosis. Last time we learned about the parts of the cell and how they're related to, to uh, cell division. We learned about DNA, we learned about kinetic cores and chromatin and spindle fibers and all these great things. This time we're going to talk about the actual cell cycle. Now that we know the pieces, let's talk about what they do. Now, the cell cycle is just that. It's a cycle. As a cell goes through its lifespan, there's a series of phases that every cell has to complete to be a fully adult cell. Then it divides to make daughter cells, and those phases begin again. Now, the main part of a cell's life is spent in interphase. So this is most of a cell's life right here. And interphase is just the cell living. It's in between cell divisions. Just like we don't spend most of our time having labor to have a baby, cells don't spend most of their time dividing. They spend most of the time doing their job. So if a cell is a nerve cell, it's transmitting messages. If a cell is a muscle cell, it's helping your body move and so on. Now interphase has three main parts, as you can see right here. We've got the G1 phase, which comes first. Then we've got the G2 phase, which comes third. And between those two, we have the S phase. So G1, then S, then G2. And we'll explore those in just a second. When a cell is dividing, however, we call that the mitotic phase. And that key word there, mitotic, obviously comes from mitosis. The mitotic phase is a division. So of our two main cell parts, or parts of the cell cycle, pardon me, we've got the first part, interphase, where the cell sends most of its time. And then we've got the second part, the mitotic phase, which is when the cell is dividing. Now division itself is broken up into a bunch of different phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then one last phase that finishes things off, cytokinesis, and we're going to learn about those today. So here's our cell cycle. Here we can see mitosis pretty clearly. There's mitosis. Now, actually, I Sir, I circled a little bit too much there, so I'm going to go ahead and delete part of that and correct that. Okay, <laughs> repeating myself, here's mitosis, this brown part right here. Which means that if that's mitosis, or the mitotic phase, that means all the rest of this stuff, everything else, can be considered interphase, in between divisions. So we can see that most of a cell's life is spent just being a cell. We've got G1, S, and G2. This is a summary. You should have this same picture in your notes. We're not going to spend too much time here. I'm going to go on and see the rest of the cell division and see more detail on these three phases right here of interphase and about mitosis. But whenever you're unsure, take a look back at this picture. Since this is a simple diagram, odds are this is a great diagram for me to ask test questions about because it's not too hard to memorize. So you should probably take a longer look at this sometime when you have some more time. The only point I'm going to make on this page right now is that we've got, of course, all of this great stuff right here. We've got interphase. We've got mitosis. And then, a little spot that's hard to see right here, a little overzealous with my drawing here, we've got cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is a special case. It's not one of our phases of mitosis. It happens right after mitosis is complete, but right before we go back into interphase. Cytokinesis is a splitting of the cell from one cell into two cells. We'll talk in more detail about it in a little bit. So, just before we get into it, here's some pictures so we can see what's going on. Here we have an adult mature cell. It's got a great big nucleus right here. There's a nucleolus in the middle. We've got asters and centrioles starting to form right here. When the cell starts to form, so it goes from a normal cell, here's our nucleus, here's a cell right before it gets started. The DNA is condensed here into chromosomes. We can see it. Because remember, the only time that you can see DNA is right before a cell divides and during division. So since we can see DNA, 
that means mitosis has started. Now, first, the nucleus breaks apart and the DNA gets loose. That way, our wonderful spindle fibers can be attached to the DNA to pull it in two directions and separate it out. Before it gets separated, though, the DNA lines up in the middle like this. That way, it's a lot easier for the cell to take the two sides and pull them off in either direction and make sure both sides get an equal amount of copies. Moving along, we see here's the DNA being pulled apart. It gets pulled even farther apart. And here we can see the cell starting to dimple in a little bit right here. That's because it's dividing into two new cells. And this spot right here shows us where that division is going to be. Here are two cells almost completely divided. Our nucleus is reforming. Here we've got our DNA in both places. This right here is that cytokinesis I was talking about on the last slide. What's happening is we're going from what is technically still just one cell because it's connected in the middle. We are cutting wow, those two cells apart from each other and now we have two new daughter cells that are independent of each other. So, cell phases. Interphase. Interphase, remember, is where we are not going through any division. So the cell is just living its life and not starting mitosis at this point. The cell has got its normal cell functions, too. It's going through, it's doing its job, it's transmitting nerve impulses or flexing like a muscle or filtering waste in your kidney or whatever the cell does normally. And finally, remember, this takes up most of the cell's lifespan, just being interphase, just doing its job. The first part of interphase is G1. So the cell has just now finished dividing. It's a brand new shiny daughter cell. And G1, the G, stands for, in our minds, growing. This is where the cell gets bigger. It's going through cell childhood, if you will. It increases in size, getting bigger, becoming a mature cell. Throughout this process, just like as you grow up, you get new uh, organs and body parts as we develop inside of our mothers to make sure we have all the machinery we need to do stuff. New proteins are being made and new organelles are being made to ensure that once the cell grows up from a little tiny daughter cell to a great big mature cell, it has all of the different bits and pieces that it needs to do its job. These are bits and pieces. And now it has them. Great. So there's G1. We've gone from brand new cell to a mature cell. Next, the S phase. Now, the S phase, now that we have an adult cell, we're going to start preparing for division. If you want to, you can think about this as kind of cell puberty. The chromosomes, or the DNA, is replicated. Remember the DNA? That long, loosey-goosey ladder right here? The DNA, we're going to replicate. Now the word replication, if you haven't run into it before, replication means to copy. So when we say that the chromosomes are replicated, we say that they're copied to make sure the cell has more than one copy of each one that it can split out between its two new daughter cells later on. And to copy chromosomes, which remember, chromosomes are DNA, that means what's going on in the S phase is DNA synthesis. There's our S, S for synthesis. So G1 phase is growing, S1 phase, or S phase, pardon me, is the synthesis of DNA. We're making more DNA, more chromosomes. Also, any proteins that the chromosomes happen to need, those get made too. All right, we've gone through cell childhood, the G1 phase, or growing. We've gone through cell puberty, if you will, the S phase for synthesis of DNA. And now we're in the G2 phase. This is right before the cell divides. Now the G2 takes almost no time at all. It's a very short phase. Because what we do in this phase is just make the organelles that we need 
for mitosis. So those would be things like the centrioles that control the splitting of a part of the cell, or the asters that coordinate the movement of the microtubules, those things we learned about in the first lecture. Now, since before we already made most of the things the cell needs, we're just making what we need for mitosis here, it doesn't take very long. Very, 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 very short, G2 here. Also, since we're about to use the DNA for a pretty important job, making a new cell, we check to be sure the DNA is up to snuff, make sure there's no errors in it or breaks or damage. So in G2, we repair the DNA. And that's interphase. Now we're on to mitosis. We're going to divide things. So if we think about mitosis, by the way, if you're stuck here and you're thinking, he just said all this stuff and I have no idea what's going on, remember, this is a video. Go back to the beginning, watch the interphase part again as we sum up all the different parts of a cell's normal life. Mitosis, however, is not the cell's normal life. This is cell division. This is big time stuff. It's important. Oh, looks like I'm moving that around. Pardon me. What's going on? We'll just leave that box there. I can't quite figure out how to put it back. What's going on here is we're finally dividing the cell. Now, the first part of mitosis is prophase, which takes up 50 to 60% of the time in mitosis. Now, don't get confused. This is 50 to 60% of the time required for mitosis. Mitosis is still just a little part of the cell's overall life. So this is the most of that little time right here. What happens in prophase, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. What happens is the chromosomes become visible. So chromatin, which remember is our loosey-goosey DNA, all spread out, condenses into chromosomes. It's all tightly coiled now, so it's easier for us to see. Here's a representation of a chromosome up here in this picture, those X's there. Next, the centrioles, remember centrioles? They go to opposite poles, so opposite sides of the cell. See, the, chromos uh, the centrioles go from being close to each other to being on opposite sides because they're going to pull apart the chromosomes, so they need to be on opposite sides of the cell in order to be able to do that. The chromosomes, remember the chromosome is that coiled DNA, attached to the spindle fibers. Remember the spindle fibers are like towing chains or grappling hooks. They're holding onto the DNA so they can pull it apart later. And finally, some things that the cell uses for normal life, but not for this, are going to disappear entirely until we need them again. So the nucleolus, which makes the ribosomes, that goes away for right now. We don't need any ribosomes for this process. It's just going to get in the way. The nuclear envelope, which separates the DNA from the rest of the cell, that breaks down too, because we don't want the DNA to be separate. We want this nuclear envelope right here, holding the DNA apart, to start to break down. It starts to have holes in it until eventually... It's gone, and we're left with no nuclear envelope at all, which is great because we have to pull apart our DNA, and that envelope just gets in the way. Okay, metaphase. We've done our prophase, and prophase is mostly just getting stuff ready. Now that everything is ready, we're going to start the division. Now, metaphase takes just a few minutes. It's very short. And part of that's because prophase is so long. Prophase takes a long time to get everything ready, just so. Once it's organized, it just takes a few minutes to finish up. The chromosomes line up across the center of the cell. So our chromosomes, you see, instead of being spread out all over the place, are now lined up. So it's nice and orderly and easy to pull apart. And the microtubules, which remember microtubules are spindle fibers, they're part of the... Uh, part of the cytoskeleton. They connect to the centromere, that's the part in the middle, remember, the region in the middle, of each chromosome to the poles, to the two ends. So we take our, let's see, get a nice visible color in there, we take our centromere and it's attached to the pole here, and it's attached to the pole here, so that when they pull, we can split it into two identical copies. We haven't pulled yet, 
That's not this phase. Metaphase is just lining up. That's all. So here we have a real cell. Let me use purple here so it doesn't get in the way too much of us seeing it, but it seems a little faint. Let's go to black. Here we have a real cell. Fantastic. There's the outside of it. And you can see in the middle a line, a line of darker material right there. Those are the chromosomes. And you can even see little lines attached to it. Those are the spindle fibers pulling everything back to the asters, the star-shaped bulges on either side of the cell. Now, I haven't pulled yet. They're just getting them in place, just lined up. Next is anaphase. Anaphase, as you can see, those dark materials, those chromosomes, are being pulled apart from each other now. In fact, that's all that anaphase does. It's really simple. It's very easy to remember because the only thing that anaphase does is separate things. It pulls the chromosomes apart. So, little review. The sister chromatids, which are the two identical copies, the two parts of the X, so this part over here used to be linked with this part over here. The sister chromatids get a, uh, here it goes, they get pulled to either side. One copy of the DNA goes to each of our new daughter cells that we're trying to form here. Once we do that, what we once called a sister chromatid, because it was linked to another one, is now on its own. So it no longer has a sister, we just call it chromosome again. And the chromosomes move to opposite poles opposite sides of the cell. So, prophase is getting things ready, metaphase is lining up in the middle, anaphase is pulling things apart. Alright, telophase. This is the last stage of proper mitosis. So telophase is the reverse of prophase. Prophase was getting things ready, undoing the nucleus, breaking holes in the nuclear envelope, getting rid of the nucleolus, lining things up. Telophase is putting everything back in order. It's putting off our toys after we've played with them. So the chromosomes, which used to be, remember, tightly tangled, spread out again and become chromatin. So this is why they tangle up so well with each other, because if something is really, really tightly wound, like Christmas lights after Christmas, it's easy to stay separate, keep everything organized. If something is loose and flowing, then those loose and flowing things tangle up with each other very, very easily. The nuclear envelope, which we broke apart before, starts to reform. You can see it here. Those bits that we got rid of so we could pull our DNA out into the rest of the cell, well, now we want our DNA separate again. So the nuclear envelope starts to reform. The spindle fibers, or the microtubules, which we just needed for a little bit, break apart. So instead of staying, if you see, if here's our chromosome, there we go, it was a copy, that's why it's got this funny shape. Here's the centromere in the middle, and we had spindle fibers attached to it, like this, pulling it back to where it needs to go. Those spindle fibers, we don't need them anymore. So they start to break down. They go away. The chromosome doesn't go away, I just erased it so we'd have some more room. And the nucleolus comes back, because since we're about to have new cells, when we cut this section, not yet, it's not cut yet, but when we cut it in a few minutes, we're going to have two new cells, and those cells need ribosomes, and ribosomes are made of the nucleolus, so we're putting things back together. Basically, if something happens in anaphase, pardon me, basically if something happens in prophase, prophase equals opposite of telophase. So if things happen in prophase, the opposite happens in telophase, and vice versa. Now that we've done this, we've got two daughter cells that are about ready to be divided. But we haven't divided them yet. At this point, we're going to that special last phase, cytokinesis. And this is our last slide for right now. Cytokinesis is Greek. 
And the word means division, that's the kinesis part, division or movement, of the cytoplasm. That's the cyto part, cytoplasm. So basically it's taking those two cells that are almost separated but not quite and dividing the cytoplasm, cutting the apron spring, strings, letting them come apart from each other to make two totally new and separate cells so they can go on to live their adult lives. Now in animal cells what happens is just what we've drawn up in this picture. It pinches together in the middle until it gets cut apart by some enzymes just pinching it all the way and finishing that job. Kind of like if you had a balloon and you twisted it in the middle and then pulled. That pinch we call a cleavage furrow. Cleave can mean to break and a furrow can mean like a ditch or a line. So a cleavage furrow is the line where things break. In plant cells though it's a little bit different. Like most other things, plants do it different than animals. Instead, plant cells have that cell wall, right? So when we look at a plant cell, it doesn't have that loose membrane shape like a water balloon. It's got a much more structured shape because of that cell wall. And so we can't just pinch it in the middle. That doesn't work. The cell wall's too strong. And so instead, what's called a cell plate begins to form. And a cell plate is a wall that's still being constructed. So you can think of it like a wall that you're building bit by bit. Once the wall starts to form, but isn't formed yet, we call that a cell plate. Now, the cell plate gradually, slowly becomes a separating membrane, not a wall. Remember, plant cells don't just have a cell wall. We just focus on that because that's where they're different than animals. They do have a membrane inside of all this, holding things together and governing things like diffusion and osmosis. So, when we have our cell plate, it starts by first dividing up the membrane, and then after the membrane's divided, then that's when the cell wall starts to form. That's when we get a wall separating these into two new cells, and once the wall fully forms, we've got two cells, each of which have their own cell membrane on their own side of that wall. Here we see a bigger picture. Here's an animal cell, which has a cleavage furrow. See how it's pinching together here in the middle? That's our place where we separate things. Our line where things are going to break is our cleavage furrow. Over on the right, though, we have a plant cell. You can tell plant because it's got those strict outlines, right? And instead of pinching together, a new line starts to form, a new wall, a new membrane. and We call that our cell plate. That's it for today. Look at this again if you have any questions, but those are the parts of, of uh, mitosis. Now, before you log off, here's a nice way to remember it. Mitosis is represented by the initials P, M, A, T. PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So if you're ever stuck for the order, just remember PMAT.